The Spirit of the Lord prompted the Apostle Paul to write in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, If you then be risen with Christ. Is anyone excited in here this morning about being risen with Christ? Come on, we ought to be, we ought to be ready to shout with joy and to be risen with Christ. But it goes on to tell us, it says that we are to seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And it tells us that we are to set our affections on those things which are above, not on those things which are here on this earth. And it says that our old life is dead and that our new life is hid Amen. with Christ in God. And then it goes on to say that we are to put on the new man, and this new man is to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. That this new man is to let the Word of Christ dwell richly in us in all wisdom. And then it goes on to tell us that we are to be singing with grace in our heart unto the Lord. Can you give Him a shout of praise this morning? Amen. Glory to God. He is good. Amen. And He is our way maker. He is our miracle worker. Hallelujah. Well, we're so glad to have each and every one of you in the service this morning. And before we dive into the Word, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads just a moment. We're going to pray, and then we'll get started. Father, we thank You for this time that we have to come together as Your body. Father, we welcome Your presence here today. As a matter of fact, Your Word teaches us that if we're gathered here, two or more gathered in Your name, that You're here in our midst. And so we turn this over to You today. Have Your way in our lives. Speak Your Word. Spirit, stir us on the inside the things that You would have us to see, the revelation that You would have us to take out of Your Word today as we go forth into a hurting world to be Your light, Lord God, that You've called to shine into the darkness. We give You all the glory and all the praise and we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen. And Amen. Well, I'm going to start out with a verse of Scripture here that we're probably all very familiar with. Hebrews 13 and 8 tells us that Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Yes, we, we need to believe that and hold on to it. Because you know, when we look around at the world that we're living in today, we can see that there has been a tremendous amount of changes that have taken place. You know, I, I, over my course of time here at, at this church, I would have never dreamed I would have saw the day where we had to spread the rows out, where people had to keep their distance from one another, because, you know, that's, that's part of life is the close fellowship that we all share. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, we were created for relationship and fellowship. It was God's desire to have fellowship with man. And also, He saw that man here on earth was alone, so He created a better helpmate for him. Amen? To have relationship and fellowship with Him with here on this earth. And so life is all about fellowship and relationship. And that's one of the things that has been so dearly affected in all of our lives is the closeness that we once were able to share. You know, I remember shortly after I heard the, the term, and I'm sure everybody has pandemic, we've probably all heard that term. I remember when I first started hearing it kind of on the, the news and I had went into the grocery store and I had to pick up one or two items and I can remember walking through the grocery store and I looked and I saw some people wearing a mask. Now, at first it was a little bit alarming to me 
seeing people wearing a mask in the grocery store because, you know, let's face it, that is not something that we're accustomed to here in this country. You know, we see and we hear about things that take place, take place but you ever thought about it? It always seems to happen somewhere else. It, it really doesn't ever seem to happen so close to home. And this time it seemed like it was happening real close to home. And I remember I lost my focus while I was in the store because I just, it, it almost seemed like I was in some kind of a imaginary world, if you will. And I remember that I, I left the grocery store and I, I didn't even buy anything. And I just, when I got out to my truck, I just kind of sat there and, and began to let all of this absorb and come in. And then a few days later, I went back to the grocery store, and I got there early, and I saw all these people coming out, and man, they had just a buggy full of paper products. <laughs> and I began to ask myself, you know, I kind of scratched my head for a minute, and I said, how is all of these paper products supposed to keep somebody safe from a invisible virus that's out there. You know, it just, for some reason, it really didn't just all click with me. But, you know, we can see that our life began to change rapidly at that point in time. Now, I know you can look back and you might think that it happened very slowly, but there was a lot of changes that took place in a period of time that was probably about maybe two, possibly three weeks long. We began to see that there was thriving businesses that began to close and people began to lose their uh, jobs and people began to panic and worry and despair and hopelessness began to take over our great country and everywhere you turn, people began to ask the question, what are we going to do? And there's still a lot of people that are asking that same question today. What are we going to do? Because this, by far, has not left us yet. It is still here. Things may be a little bit different with it, but it's still here. But you know, if I ask each and every one in here today, if you've personally been affected by the things that are taking place in our world today, I imagine everybody in here could probably shake their head and say yes, uh, we've all been affected, you know, to some degree. It's touched or impact every one of our lives. Now, some probably more than others because of the circumstances that they face in life have been more affected by what's taking place in the world today than others probably have. But to one big extent, we can all say that what has touched each and every one of us is that we have lost some of the freedoms that we once so greatly enjoyed and cherished. We've all lost that because everybody has to keep their distance. Everybody has to do so many things that are different. Amen? But if we stop and we look back and we compare each and every one out of our lives and our walk here on this earth, one common thing that we can all share together is the simple fact that our lives are always and forever changing. Can, can you agree with me on that? We're forever, our lives are forever changing. You see, there are going to be people in our lives that change. There are going to be things in our lives that change. Our circumstances are going to change. And places that we once knew are going to change as well. You know, I can think back when I first moved to the community here or the village of Benton, how much things have changed in Benton and going towards Bossier City, you see places are changing as well. So everything in our life, all the circumstances, everything that we touch are always going to be forever changing in our lives. But one thing as a child of God, 
that we can always, always count on is despite all of the changes that occur in our places, our circumstances, our people, and all of these other things, our God never changes. He is the same as He was before all of this has taken place. You see, our God is still good all the time. Amen? Amen. Our God is still our healer. Amen? Amen? Our God is still our provider. Our God is still our redeemer. You see, none of that has changed. None of this has somehow caught God off of God, off guard. None of this that's transpired in the world today has come by any big surprise unto God. But there's a verse of Scripture that I want to touch on briefly this morning, and that's Romans 8 and 28. And it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. Now, this was not God's doings and this was not God's idea. This virus did not come from Him. And there have been a lot of bad things that have happened. There's been a lot of serious outcomes and issues and different things that have happened in all of our lives because this has taken place. But you see, God has also been able to tap into that and God has been able to use things out of this for His good. You see, people have begun to step out of a comfort zone that they once so knew and stayed in. They've came out of that comfort zone. There have been people that maybe walked away from the close fellowship that they once experienced with God who have come back and called upon His name. The fellowship has been restored. Relationships with people that are close and dear to you have grown. You know, we've seen that because, you know, the, the units that stay together, you know, you, you begin to find out that, you know, maybe the person that you're so close to isn't so bad after all. And, and, and you know, you've grown closer to that individual because you've spent more time with them. So there's been a bond, a family bond, that has actually gotten better. And there have been countless numbers of other people who never knew Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior who have called upon His name during this time in life. And so, despite all of the unpleasant things that have taken place in the world today, there is only one who is able in the midst of all of life's turmoil and, and circumstances that hurt and that are so unpleasant and is able to somehow, that's up to Him, but somehow be able to make good, some good come from those things that we journey through here on this earth. You know, I remember the term shelter in place. Everybody familiar with that? You know, we've heard that countless number of times. I believe in Louisiana, our shelter in place order came out, I think it was March the 22nd. And I believe California's came out, I believe theirs was first on March the 16th where they said, hey, it's time, you know, for us to begin to shelter in place. And so I want to want to briefly touch on that topic there, just, just a moment, if you will. But you know, first, what we have to understand is there are a lot of things in this world that could be called a shelter. And so I went to the dictionary this morning and I took the liberty to give us a few definitions of how the dictionary defines the term shelter. So follow along with me. It says, that which covers or defends from injury or annoyance, the state of being covered and protected, protection, security, 
to cover from violence, injury, annoyance, or attack, to defend, to protect from danger, to secure or render safe, to harbor, to cover from notice, to disguise for protection. That's a pretty in-depth definition, if you will, of the term shelter. So if we look at this, we can see that a shelter really would probably be called some place that we can go and we can seek protection or defense from, number one, all forms of violence, all forms of injury, annoyances, and even dangers. But last but not least is that it says that it even serves as a place to harbor or disguise us. And so when I began to ponder all of these things and begin to put it together, it really sounded to me like a simpler term for the definition of what a shelter would be would be probably called a refuge. Would, would you say that's probably a, a good assumption of it? Is a place of refuge because a place of refuge is a place that we know that we can go, we can be ourselves when we go to this refuge and we can just kind of go and chill out and we can hang out in that place because we can always just, just be who we are because we know that for whatever circumstances that it is that's taken place in our life at that time, our place of refuge is the absolute best place that we can be in time, for that moment in time in our life. And so we can just go and chill out. You know, here probably about a, maybe a month or so ago, we experienced around us some pretty violent storms that came through our local area here. And in, in my house, our bathroom has always been our shelter, if you will, because it fits the bill of kind of being the smaller room in the middle of the house, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so my wife was out of town that night, and I was at home with the, the critter that was there with, with me. And, you know, they said that about the storms that were going to be coming through our area, and so I had taken the appropriate precautions that I normally do. I went into the bathroom and took some pillows off the couch, you know, in case I needed to cover myself up. I had my cell phone in there. I had a little battery-operated light. And for some reason, I always take my car keys in there. I, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Well, but anyway, if they make me feel safe. So I had my car keys in there. And I remember I was watching the news that night. And, you know, they had the little blip on the radar. And they kept showing it, you know, as it was coming across. And so I was watching the TV. And it started getting really, really close. And they started saying this about, hey, you need to take shelter now and all. And I did like I normally do. I kind of waited. I started hearing the house begin to kind of pop and creak, you know, from the, from the wind. And the lights kind of began to start flashing on and off. So I leisurely got up and I walked into the bathroom into my place of shelter. Depending on how severe it is, is whether I close the door or not. If I feel really threatened, I'll close the door. Otherwise, I'll leave the door open. So I was sitting there on the edge of the bathtub, and you know, and everything began to take place, and it got really loud. So I got up and I went and I closed the door to the bathroom. And I, I so I eased down into the floor. I had the pillow in my hand, and I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, the house really started making a horrendous noise and the cat dove under the pillow that I had in my lap. Never seen him do that, but he dove under the pillow like he was sheltering there and I mean, it just got really, really loud in there. And at that moment in time, I realized something. That my place of shelter no longer felt as safe as it once did, because my life was threatened. I began to see these pictures that you see on the news after storms come through where everything has been wiped out or leveled there, so I didn't feel safe. 
And I began to pray in the Spirit. And as I began to pray in the Spirit, all of a sudden, my focus was off of all the noise, off of all the way the lights were flashing, the way the cat was hiding. And the Spirit of the Lord took me to places because I began to seek those things which are above. You see, I began to set my affections on the things that were above rather than the things that were here around me that were so close and surrounding to me. And so God was able to take me to this place and I realized that my life was here with Christ. You see, as a believer, that's what that means is that our life is hidden with Him. And then I felt so safe. Despite all of the things that were taking place, I felt safe and I felt secure at where it was at. So that was one of my prayers after that time in the bathroom that night was that we would all begin to examine the things in our life that we've let come in that we call our shelters or our places of refuge. You see, there's countless numbers of people across the world that have somehow let their work consume them so much that it has become a place of shelter and a place of refuge. And yes, we have to work for a living. So don't... don't Count me out there. Amen. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it cannot be so consuming that it overwhelms you. We see that others have let people, they've become so consumed by other people in their life that somehow they found a refuge or a place of shelter in there. Or maybe homes or material possessions, whatever it is. And yes, God does want His children to be blessed because we are blessed to be a blessing. But the blessing cannot have a hold of a child of God. It's meant to be passed on. And so, after this, we can see that people have let chemicals Chemical dependency become a shelter or a place of refuge for them. And there's countless other things out there that people have become so consumed in. But in reality, so if we look at this true definition of what a shelter would be, none of these things that I mentioned here can even come somewhat close to fitting the bill to be a safe shelter for any of us. Now, they may offer a little bit of protection from our physical bodies from the elements of the weather, or they might just merely be a, a short hiding place, but none go into the depth required to be a defender from all forms of danger. You see, because they offer absolutely no protection whatsoever for our spiritual life. You see, our spirit is going to forever live in one of two places. It is forever going to live in God's presence or it is forever going to live absence from the presence of God. You know, in that same chapter that I started out in, it says, when Christ appears, who is our life, we shall appear with Him in glory. You see, that's a promise that a child of God, a born-again child has, is that we will forever be in the glory. The glory of God. Amen? And so, none of these things offer any spiritual protection for us. So they really offer no real security for us because they are subject to change. You, we can look across the, the world today and there are a countless number of people who are still sheltering in place 
that are still in so much distress. But you see, there's only one true shelter. And He is the same today. He is the same as He was yesterday. And He will be the same tomorrow as well because He never, ever, ever changes. You know, David said something very well in Psalms 61 and 3. He said, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. You see, David always knew that despite all of the unpleasant circumstances that he encountered in life, that despite all of the times that maybe he failed God or that he missed the mark of what God had called for him, he always knew that God was always there for him because God never failed him. He could always count on the fact that God was there. God was always a place of protection and a place of security from His enemies in life. You see, God had become David's place of refuge. Now he knew that there was a lot of other things out there that could offer a little bit of protection to him from the elements, and we all face those. But he knew that there was only one place of shelter and protection that existed for his soul. You see, only one offered the defense from the enemy. David knew that that was God. And so, I want to ask you this morning, do you have an uneasiness about something in your spirit? You know, maybe you feel troubled or maybe you feel oppressed for, for some unknown reason. Maybe you're not even sure what it is, but there's just something there that seems like it's not quite right. Maybe you need that place of rest. Maybe you need that place of refuge. And you know, uh, a believer can actually become depressed and oppressed. Amen. We see it each and every day because we encounter some horrific things in this life, in our journey. But the Word teaches us that if we'll call upon His name, if we'll give those cares over unto Him, we too can be hidden where we're supposed to be and find rest in we for the weariness that we all face. In Psalms 9-9 it says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And then the Word gives us a promise in Romans 10 and 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. See, that's a promise that we have. Now, when we say, well, you know, I'm already born again. The Bible says that I am not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. There are countless number of people who are born again, but they need to be saved from circumstances that are consuming them in life. And that's where I'm at today. That might be you. But that's between you and the Master. That's nobody else's business. But the Bible is very clear. If you will call upon that name and believe it in your heart, and confess victory over that in Jesus' name, you can overcome this morning. And so I'm going to ask you if you will, as I close the service this morning, if you will bow your heads. And I pray that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to some of you this morning. And that you'll give that over unto Him. Or, or maybe people will be watching later. Amen. It's never too late to call upon that name. If you need salvation, there's no other name under heaven but by the name of Jesus.
So maybe sin has somehow come into your life, or maybe you walked away from that close fellowship, or maybe something else has consumed your life and you want God to deliver you from it today. If you call upon that name, He'll do it. So as I pray, follow along in your spirit and cry out unto Him. Father, we come to You in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that there's no other name under heaven by which a man may be saved. Father, maybe we need to be saved from sin that separated us from You. Maybe we need to be back in that close fellowship and we're not exactly sure what it was that, that caused us to, to turn and walk away from all of Your grace and Your mercy. I pray that You would speak that into our spirit man today so that we can confess it and be restored back unto You. Father, that if there are those there that need to be delivered from chemical dependency, in Jesus' name, that they can be delivered. Maybe it's oppression. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's other people. Whatever it is, if they will cry out unto you, you will deliver them from that snare this morning. And your word teaches us that if we believe the prayer in our heart that Jesus died in our place and rose again, and we call upon Him to be our Savior, we will be saved and born again and made new and hidden with Christ in God. And so if you pray this morning and ask God to touch you, believe that He will. Amen. Because He is our way maker. He is our miracle worker. Glory to God. Glory to God. So good to have everyone here this morning. So glad you came out. And I pray that as you go forth from the doors of the church today, amen, set your affections on those things which are above. You know, I believe that there is revival coming very, very close. Amen. And it's going to start with each and every one of you. Amen. So let's go out and be world changers, amen, for the cause of Christ this morning. You are dismissed. Hallelujah.